All right, YouTubers, that's a pretty darn good view. What I have now is I have the camera on the bike, the GoPro, and we're gonna ride down and then over to the right, and a monument to Sitting Bull is supposed to be there. I'm gonna go check it out, and we'll do more stuff later. All right, there's the RV. Let's get right. Told me it wasn't very far. When I asked if I could ride my bike, they said, yeah, it's not far. We'll see. <laughs> if you just want the monument stuff, go to about 240. This will be fun coming back up. It really wasn't a bad bike ride, and it's pretty country. Even though there's not a lot of trees, it's still very pretty. Uh, we got four miles. Okay, I won't make you watch me bike four miles. Oh, I'm out of shape. Well, uh, I need to get in shape like last year. You don't want to hear me cursing up this hill, so enough for now. Beautiful, though. Again, I need some of that shit Lance Armstrong was taking. I saw a snake slither across the road. I don't know what it was, but I'm glad it kept going. Who's was looking at me, eyeballing me. I hope we're getting there. a guy go slowly up a hill on a bike, is it? <laughs> There's a sign. I'm assuming it's this way and the van again passed me in like this way. These monuments aren't anything extravagant, but it was well worth the visit. Most of us say Sacagawea, but I think the proper is Sacagawea. Sacagawea, but don't quote me on that either. Uh, won her place in history as the indomitable guide of Lewis and Clark on their trip to the Pacific in 1805. She was a member of the Shoshone tribe dwelling near the Bighorn Mountains in Montana. In one of the frequent tribal conflicts, she was captured and taken to North Dakota as a war captive. Here she was purchased by a fur trader named Toussaint Charbonneau, who, according to custom, made her his wife. Lewis and Clark, in search of an interpreter for their trip west, tried to hire Charbonneau, but he would not go unless his wife was permitted to accompany him. The explorers reluctantly gave their permission. This was a fortunate decision for Lewis and Clark. By her courage, endurance, and unerring instinct, she guided the expedition over seemingly insurmountable obstacles. The leaders frequently gave her credit for the success of the venture, after returning east, Charbonneau and Sacagawea were settled down in Fort Manuel, about 30 miles north of here, near Canal, South Dakota. On December 20th, 1812, it was recorded in the Daily Journal of events at the fort that Sacagawea died of a putrid fever. There is no further record of her, but it is safe to assume that this remarkable woman's grave is somewhere near the site of the old Fort Manuel. Sacagawea is, beyond question, the most illustrious feminine representative of the Indian race. I don't know, for a lot of people, stuff like this is not as fun or important as sitting by the camp drinking a beer, but this kind of does it for me. So that tower in the center, that's the casino. That wasn't too bad, four miles. All right, I don't know what you can see. 
but if my finger's pointing to where I think it is, you can see the sitting bull and Sacagawea monuments. If that was four miles, it was an easy four miles. I don't think that was a prairie dog, I think it was a bird. I always wish I understood signs and calls and stuff, if anybody recognizes that. Let me know. I'm always glad to learn. Sitting bulls over there. Let's go check that out. This guy was a professional photographer. We talked for like over an hour. He had so much knowledge about this time frame and the Indian stuff all through the area. It was really cool to learn a lot of stuff. And again, this video is just a tiny little piece. And if you want more information, obviously, Google's a wonderful resource. Very nice monument. All right, I noticed first off, there's two different birth years for Sitting Bull on the statue. It says 1831 to 1890, and here it says 1834 to 1890. I can't pronounce his given Indian name, but it says Sitting Bull was born on the Grand River a few miles west of Moobridge. His tragic end came at the very place he was born. He was shot when being arrested because of his alleged involvement with the ghost dance craze. Sitting Bill was originally buried at Fort Yates, North Dakota on April 8, 1953. Surviving relatives with the aid of the Dakota Memorial Association moved his remains to the present location and dedicated the memorial burial site on April 11, 1953. 1876, victorious at the Battle of Little Bighorn. 1877, sought asylum in Canada. 1881, returned to the United States. 1885, toured with Buffalo Bill's Wild West Show. The guy I talked with for so long says there's still controversy whether or not they actually moved his remains here from Fort Yates, but I guess it adds a little bit to the history. Every time I come to a place like this, it makes me want to learn more history or in many cases, relearn stuff that I've forgotten over time. There's just so much cool history in this country. Not all of it's wonderful and pretty, but there's some great history and places like this are to me well worth checking out. And not to mention just the natural beauty of the area. We're gonna ride back. I sure wish there was a garbage can I'd pick all that crap up. But... You got a bunch of roosters hiding in the shade of your van over there. <laughs> I saw them walk down that little ridge and they're just sitting right under it in the shade. Yeah. Now at this point I should actually just end the video and say have a great and wonderful day. But if you're interested in watching a really bouncy bike ride back four miles, you'll get to see some of this scenery. Also, if you go into YouTube, you can slow the speed down a little bit. So it might not be so jiggly, but you know, when you're riding a bike, it's a little bit difficult to keep things steady. I guess one of these days I need to invest in a gimbal or something. But I enjoyed the ride and I enjoyed the scenery. Up a hill.
See if I walk it or ride it. I'm walking. There's Eddie. Cool, hope you enjoyed. Have a great and wonderful